every so often you'll go through a period in your life you will see yourself as a failure because you don't see yourself operating in the way that you dreamed that you would. The pressure in your life right now has a purpose. It's not crushing you. It's pushing what's on the inside of you out. It shows you who you are. It's how you find out what's on the inside of you. I want to remind y'all of the power of the mind. You can think your way into stress. You can think your way into misery, frustration. But if you change your mind, it'll change your life. You just have to decide in your mind what you want it to be. You just have to wake up. You just have to break that negative spirit. You have to break through. There is nothing more practical than developing a vision. It's not some pie in the sky exercise. It's Without a vision, you're chaotic and fragmented and hopeless and disappointed and someone can stop you just by putting up a single obstacle. You're a house divided amongst itself. You have no forward movement. You're, you're not enthusiastic and that's to be filled with the Spirit of God, by the way. And your life is a sequence of disappointments and frustrations and tragedies and you're a leaf blowing in the wind. And that is not what you're called to be. That's not what you're called to be. You're called to be a visionary constructor of the paradisal vision, really, that's who you are, terrible as that is to apprehend. We already will lose everything we have to lose, right? We're all in in this game, man, so there's, whether you want it to be this way or not, you are betting everything on your life. You don't know what you've got until all hell breaks loose. You don't know what you can take until the pressure is applied to your life. You don't know what you can endure until people stab you in the back and walk away from you. You don't know how much courage you have until you've been under fire and under struggle and under tribulation. Just as nature takes every obstacle, every impediment, and works around it, turns it to its purposes, incorporates it into itself, so too a rational being can turn each setback into raw material and use it to achieve its goal. You can make anything very tough for yourself or you can do anything playfully. There is nothing really tough or easy. It is the way people experience it that something becomes very tough or something becomes a joyful process. If you make light of yourself, life will never sit heavy upon your heart. It will be life. But you think too much of yourself, everything will become difficult. Sitting, standing, Somebody looked at you like this, so much difficulty, isn't it? Somebody did not look at you, so much difficulty. This is because you have made yourself bigger than what you are. You have ideas about yourself, exaggerated ideas about yourself. If you become too serious about who you are, then everything becomes difficult. If you carry yourself lightly, then everything is with ease. There's two great words of antiquity everybody should learn. Here they are, one's positive and one's negative. Here's the positive word from antiquity. Behold, that's the positive word. Behold the possibilities, behold the opportunity, behold the future and give it design. Behold and look at the chances you've got. Behold, spring has come. Behold, the day has arrived. And the sun is shining and the shadows are fleeing away. Behold, the next person you can meet might be your friend for life. Behold, the next person might be a colleague forever. Behold, that's the positive word, behold. Now, here's the negative word. Beware. Beware of what you become in pursuit of what you want. Beware. All of our lives, we have to deal with behold and beware. When a kid goes to school, it's behold the opportunity and beware the dangers, behold and beware. So beware of what you become, pursuing what you want. Some things I went for in the very beginning cost me too much. I got so obsessed with some things that I found out later the price was too big to pay. If I would have known better, I never would have paid. But sometimes we learn when, after, after.
So don't become so obsessed with something that you lose your sense of reason or it costs you your friends. Don't be so obsessed with something that you compromise your virtues and your value. The story says Judas got the money. You say, well, that's a success story. No, no. It's true, 30 pieces of silver was a sizable sum of money, but it was not a success story. His name was Judas. Doesn't that ring a bell? It makes all the difference in the world. Judas got the money. Here's something interesting about the story of Judas. After he got the money, he was unhappy. Someone says, well, if you had a fortune in your hand, would you, why would you be unhappy? And here's the key. He was not unhappy with the money. He was unhappy with himself. Here's a key phrase. The greatest source of unhappiness is self-unhappiness. It's not from outside the things that make us unhappy. Greatest devastating unhappiness is to be unhappy with yourself. Now a mild form of unhappiness is construct. The desperate form of unhappiness is destruct. It's like worry. We should all worry a little, but not let it destroy our lives. So it's called caution, but not undue caution. It's called fear and worry, but not the worry that kills you, not the worry that destroys you. It's like hate. You know, you don't need to hate your job. Save your hate for the important things like evil, like the weeds that attack your guard, like the diabolical ideas that try to entice your children. Right? You don't need to hate everything. I hate this, I hate that. That's the misuse of your hate. Save it for the things we really must do. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself and in no instance bypass the discriminations of reason? You have been given the principles that you ought to endorse and you have endorsed them. What kind of teacher then are you still waiting for in order to refer your self-improvement to him? You are no longer a boy but a full-grown man. If you are careless and lazy now and keep putting things off and always deferring the day after which you will attend to yourself, you will not notice that you are making no progress, but you will live and die as someone quite ordinary. From now on then, resolve to live as a grown-up who is making progress and make whatever you think best a law that you never set aside. And whenever you encounter anything that is difficult or pleasurable or highly or lowly regarded, remember that the contest is now you are at the Olympic Games. You cannot wait any longer and that your progress is wrecked or preserved by a single day in a single event. Success is both a journey and a destination, isn't it? It is both the steady, measured progress toward a goal and the achievement of a goal. Success is an accomplishment, whether it be great or small, and it's an understanding of the potential and power of an entire human life. Success is an awareness of value and it's the cultivation of value through discipline. It can be tangible or intangible. Success is a process of turning away from something in order to turn towards something else. From no exercise to exercise, from candy to fruit, from not investing to investing. Success is responding to an invitation, an invitation to change, to grow, to develop, to become, to move up to a better place with a better vantage point. But most of all, Success is making your life what you want it to be. Considering all the possibilities, considering all the examples, what do you want for your life? That is the big question. Remember, success is not a set of standards from our culture, but rather a collection of personal values clearly defined and ultimately achieved. Success is your better life for you, the design you give it, the dreams you accomplish making your life what you want it to be for you, that is success.